Your child or yourself are going to have a genetic test using high throughput genome sequencing in a medical genetics department because your doctor thinks there's an underlying genetic cause to your medical issues. This analysis identifies the cause of the disease in a certain number of individuals depending on the type of disease. However, in the remaining individuals, the analysis will not have found the cause of the disease. But the increase of medical knowledge could lead your geneticist to provide you with additional results in the future. Written informed consent must be signed before this test can be performed. Its purpose is to get your permission to do this analysis and to allow you to access other information that you might wish to know. Even if this isn't why this analysis is performed, it could help identify genetic risk factors for diseases unrelated to the initial disease. There are several types of results. When the laboratory offers to access to this information, this mostly concerns diseases for which monitoring, prevention or treatment measures exist. These findings are called secondary findings. For example, these genetic factors increase the risk of some cancers or heart diseases compared to the general population. In these examples, it is uncertain whether the person with a genetic predisposition will one day develop the disease. These predispositions are found in about 2-3% to of people. However, this percentage may vary according to the list of analyzed genes. The laboratory will not look for predisposition to diseases with no known prevention or treatment, for example, a predisposition to early-onset Alzheimer's disease. On the consent form, you have the choice to know this information or to refuse to be informed. You can contact your medical geneticist if you change your mind. Spontaneously, most people want to know these results. However, in families affected by these genetic predispositions, half of the people decide not to carry out the analysis because of the concern and the impact generated by the result. It is important to consider the benefits and drawbacks to help you make your choice. On the one hand, the benefits are the identification of a predisposition to a disease allowing for early diagnosis and therefore better care, not only increasing the chances of healing, but also limiting the after effects of some treatments. For example, the identification of a genetic predisposition to breast and ovarian cancer secondary to a mutation in the BRCA genes will lead to an annual monitoring in adulthood to detect cancer as early as possible and offer preventive surgery. The identification of a genetic predisposition to a hereditary cardiac rhythmic disorder will lead to an annual monitoring, sometimes from childhood, and treatment to avoid the risk of sudden death. On the other hand, there are some disadvantages. You have to be aware of the supplementary psychological impact that this information could generate for you and your family. The identified factor is often present in one parent. However, each relative decides whether to consult and have the screening test or not. You will be responsible for communicating this information to your relatives who might be concerned. It is also possible that there is only a secondary finding without finding the cause of the referral disease. Do not hesitate to ask your questions to the prescribing geneticist or to the genetic counsellor for additional information.